Hi, Jason. Uh, as best you can, can you summarize uh, what uh, what it was like uh, on the trip? Uh, you know, falling into the, uh, the COVID protocol and, and then coming home, and I'm sure it was a uh, it was a very a different Christmas for you and your family. Yeah, it was definitely uh, a whirlwind couple of weeks. Uh, stuff that you don't ever predict will happen, but um, you know, very fortunate to be able to make it home uh, because I was in the the first group of guys that got diagnosed with COVID. Uh, I was symptom free and uh, testing negative in my rapids by the time Christmas Day came around. So I was uh, thankful that I could see my kids on Christmas morning, and uh, it was you know nice just to be around them and uh, be able to celebrate Christmas with them. So uh, pretty fortunate that way. And to follow up, uh, you guys, you have a lot of uh, games to make up. Uh, you know, it's a long way off, but um, just wondered about how you're looking at February now and uh, that that month being a bit jammed up and of course uh, March and April are going to be too. Yeah, I think there's a, you know, quite a bit of unknown into what the, the second half of the season is going to look like here for us. Um, I'm sure, you know, where they can fit games into the, uh, what was the Olympic break will now be, you know, hopefully filled with some games. I don't think we'll have as long of a break as players. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some sort of a bye week, but we hope to fill those dates with games and if need be, maybe they extend the season, you know, a week or so to allow us not to cram things in too much. I think it's important for, you know, the safety of players that we don't just cram games in for the sake of cramming it. I hope we can make time in the schedule to uh, resume a somewhat normal schedule and uh, play the games, make sure we get all 82 in and, uh, and then have a good playoff. Thank you. Next up, we'll go to David Alter with the Hockey News. Go ahead, David. Hey, Jason, um, take us through the suspension appeal process. Obviously, that was your first time going through anything like that. And uh, were you satisfied with how it all played out? Yeah, um, definitely a new, uh, a new situation for me to go through. Um, I'm happy that there was an appeal process. Um, you know, the, you go through your initial hearing, you get your games. And then uh, for me, it was, uh, you know, I you know, just disagreed with the length of the suspension. So that's why the rules are in place to be able to appeal. And I uh, got to speak in front of uh, Mr. Bettman and uh, Bill Daly and George and, um, you know, able to kind of talk through the play, uh, go over it with them, and then uh, was relieved to see that they had reduced it a couple games. And uh, now next time we play a game, that'll make me eligible to play. So I'm happy uh, that that was able to be the outcome. And also thought it was important just to, to use the process that's allowed as players and to exercise my right to you know, go to an appeal. So uh, I was you know, happy with the process and, uh, you know, Mr. Bettman was very respectful in the fact that, you know, being able to kind of try to get my, uh, my case in, you know, before the games uh, were done and uh, overall pretty happy with it. Was there any disappointment uh, that, you know, you guys argued that uh, there was an ill intent on the play, uh, that perhaps it wasn't reduced any further or is it just a situation where at that point you had served the time so you just wanted to let it go i'm not going to publicly debate kind of how the uh the the arguments went or not even arguments just you know how i saw it and how they saw it and uh george has a tough job obviously and uh, i'm happy that there was a second layer of appeal uh for me to you know to be able to speak uh to mr bettman and explain my perspective on the play and um, yeah, you know, at that point I'd served four games. So to get two games knocked off, I felt was, uh, just, and, and allows me how to play when we play again. How much time was there from when you got the, the decision to when you tested positive and what was going through your mind in that, that short period of time? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, a relief and excitement in the morning. I think I spoke to him around 7 30 AM, uh, that. I believe it was Friday. Uh, and then I found out probably four or six hours later that I had been tested positive for COVID. So I was pretty down, uh, you know, with the excitement of coming back and I had come on the road trip and uh, was really hopeful that I'd get my suspension reduced and try to stay fresh and ready to go. And uh, just try to, you know, keep the spirits up for myself and, and just try to be a positive influence around the guys. And, and then to have it, taken away with COVID was, you know, range of emotions. And then the games got canceled. Turns out that I didn't miss anything anyways. So uh, definitely a whirlwind couple, couple hours for me though. Kyle, men uh, Kyle mentioned this story of how uh, difficult the process it was just to get home and make sure you guys were home in time for the holidays. 
I guess, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, take us through what you went through in that situation where you were kind of wondering, am I going to get home or not? Like just given the, the delays and whatnot to try to get home. Yeah. Um, you know, first off, I'm, you know, very fortunate that I played for the Leafs and with Mr. Tannenbaum and, and Kyle and Brendan Shanahan, the attention they paid to like us and our families, uh, they did everything, you know, in their power to make sure that there was a safe way we could get home that wasn't breaking rules. It was safe for the people on the plane with us, the flight attendants and the pilot. Um, and these things, as you learn, are not an easy process. And we were probably the furthest point we could be away from home. So uh, there's definitely some restless moments in the hotel uh, in Vancouver, just wondering, you know, if and how we were going to be able to get home. But uh, very fortunate that the organization cared about it as much as we did and uh, very thankful that they were able to do everything they could to get us home. Uh, but on the positive too, I think by being on the road and getting it, I didn't expose my family to it. So I think there was some comfort in that, uh, knowing that, you know, they were safe and they didn't have to worry about uh, my wife and kids in that sense. So, uh, probably good that I spent a few days, you know, in the hotel there and it gave them a chance to, they went up to my wife's parents' house and, uh, stayed away from me while I was symptomatic and, uh, contagious. So, uh, you know, it all works out and you just kind of take what's ahead of you and you adapt and, my wife's been doing it for a long time, so uh, she knows to expect the unexpected. <laughs>